the issue of the, the traders. We are, it is true we have been having a problem for the last uh, almost two months. Our, our traders were accused of exporting goods that have aflatoxin. Now there's a dispute. Our traders say they are, their goods do not have aflatoxin. The South Sudan people say they are aflatoxin, so they do not allow them to be sent to the market. So they impounded the trucks. Uh, then we tried to send the inspectors of Uganda Bureau of Standards and the Republic of South Sudan Bureau of Standards to work together to verify whether they were aflatoxin, but that became difficult. So what we have done, we have now asked the South African community to send independent uh, inspectors at the illegal border. The trucks will come from Sudan, park at the illegal border. The inspectors will come and inspect, and then tell us whether actually they have aflatoxins. But this is what I wrote in, uh, in summary. This is what I proposed to the government of South Sudan. Trucks and cargo to be released and secured at a one-stop border post at Elego. Two, upon release, consignment shall be retested using an accredited laboratory witnessed by the president from UNBS, Uganda Revenue Authority, Minister of Trade and Industry, Minister of Agriculture, Presidential uh, Committee on uh, Exports, Minister of East Africa, Private Sector Foundation, and nominated counterparts from the Republic of South Sudan. Three, the consignments that are not conforming will be dealt with according to the East African Community Standards. There are some standards because we have an act. Then, after that, the joint team, which will be at a level, will agree on the way forward. I also propose number five, to establish a public and private partner forum to remain alert to deal with these issues. Uh, so this is what I proposed to yesterday's government of South Sudan. They have not yet answered, but this is my proposal. So that way. Maybe I'll ask the uh, executive secretary. Uh, my colleagues from the East African community, the heads of organs of the East African community, and all our East African citizens. The East African Kiswahili Commission is an institution of the East African community that is, called, is responsible for coordinating the promotion and development of Kiswahili in the region for regional integration and sustainable development. Uh, when Kiswahili was given this day by UNESCO, uh, the East African community embraced the idea and the Council of Ministers approved and recommended that we celebrate it as the East African community. And the East African community being a hub for Kiswahili, we could not delay or we could not wait for any other opportunity. We had to swing up in action. And the good thing, uh, the treaty for establishment of the East African community uh, was recognizing Kiswahili as a lingua franca and the heads of state summit had already adopted it as an official language alongside French and English. So now what we are doing is now to continue what is already in place. Kiswahili was being developed as a lingua franca, but now it has an added advantage. It's being developed as an official language. And in addition to the celebrations now that have been, uh, or the status that has been accorded by the UN under its specialized institution of UNESCO, we are getting into more steps. This is an opportunity that, as, as the Right Honorable has said, that is the first one, or that is given to the Kiswahili as the first African language to be recognized by UNESCO. This is an initiative that started long ago, as long as the 1950s, because it's among the few languages that even are uh, even broadcasted under the UN radio network. Kiswahili has a, 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 an area where it is broadcasted under the UN radio network. So it is something that we need to embrace. As a community, now we are looking for what strategies do we put forward to promote the language. And we are celebrating this year under a theme, Kiswahili, Multilingualism and Multilingualism, Achieving More Together. This is the first, the uh, second time we are celebrating this Kiswahili Language Day. When we had the first celebrations last year in Zanzibar, United Republic of Tanzania, hosted by the East African Kiswahili Com Commission in collaboration with the United Republic of Tanzania. So here we are in Uganda celebrating the second World Kiswahili Language Day. And we must commend the Republic of Uganda for accepting to host this event. It is something we don't take for granted. And it is something that Uganda has really invested in and it shows the value it attaches to the language and to the integration agenda. We, we, we appreciate 
the efforts that have been put in place by the Republic of Uganda and we look forward to working with them and other partner states in celebration of the same. I want to inform you that uh, we have representatives from all partner states that will be coming to join in the celebrations that will be held in the Republic of Uganda. Uh, we are starting today with a celebration or with an engagement with the youth which is taking place at Makere University where we are engaging the youth on Kiswahili, multilingualism, modern technologies and opportunities in the new uh, digital era especially as we are in the 21st century. So here we are looking at um, uh, embracing the youth as key uh, pillars in the integration agenda and we call upon you also to join us in that activity. The, it's right now going on at Makere University in the College of Engineering Conference Hall. Uh, we shall be having a symposium where we are going to have different presenters talk about different topics on Kiswahili and multilingualism in different sectors uh, where we expect policy recommendations, where we expect uh, all recommendations that will lead to outcomes or outputs of the conference. And then we shall have the final celebrations on the 7th of July. Tunacho kiomba ni kwamba, kila...